Hey guys, this is L. Welcome back to my channel. So if you guys have been following my channel for quite some time now, you guys may have seen this video here where I basically redesigned Candy Queen from the first series of the Barbie Extra Dolls. And she turned out to be my most popular design. Uh, she has the most views out of both videos. And well, I thought it would be a great idea to actually customize a doll based off of that particular fashion illustration. And here we are. <laughs> so like I mentioned in a prior video, I am a fashion designer, so I know how to make patterns, cut and sew them. And that is not the problem that I have making this. The most daunting thing for me is going to be drawing the little tiny features onto a Kira head mold. So, like I mentioned, this is gonna be my first customization and you guys are gonna be able to bear witness as to how the final product comes out. So I'm super excited you are able to join me. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it and see what comes out at the end. So here we start off by laying out all the fabric and making sure that our little tiny patterns are aligned perfectly and then we start cutting out all of the different pattern pieces and this can be a little bit difficult just because the pattern pieces are so small as you are going to see in this particular fabric. These panels are tiny and I had to be very very careful with the way I cut these. In addition to these pattern pieces being extremely tiny, as soon as you cut this fabric, it would start fraying. So in order to prevent that, I used a particular glue called Fray Stop in order to have all the edges be coated and not to keep unraveling. Um, actually, it's called Fray Check, <laughs> as you can see the bottle here. And I had to do this with all the pieces in this particular fabric. And now we're going on to the skirt and this was so much easier to cut because this pleather fabric was so much more forgiving than the previous two. And we follow all the steps that we did for the other patterns with this as well. And now we're getting to the sewing version. And as you can see, I've laid out a piece of notebook paper here instead of using tearaway. Um, it works just as well because this paper is very, very thin. And basically it stabilizes your sewing machine so that the sewing machine won't eat the fabric when the needle goes down because the seam allowance on these pieces is so tiny that usually your sewing machine will eat it. So as you can see here, I'm also going into this iridescent fabric which is even more difficult to sew because it's so delicate and we're going in and we're sewing the bust pieces onto the bottom part of the bodice and I had to be very very careful here because it was a curved seam and on top of that um, if I went too fast, I kind of ran the risk of having the fabric fray and tear and I did not want to do that because it took me a long time to sew the upper portion of this particular garment. So here we go. So now the last piece of the top is sewing on the little lace sleeves onto the actual bodice and look how cute that bodice looks on the left. Oh my god, I'm so excited. And let's see how it looks after we sew on these sleeves. And now let's repeat the same steps for the skirt.
diamantes on the actual boot. And then after this, I'll probably seal the entire thing with another layer of tacky glue to completely seal everything together and make sure that none of this glitter comes off as you're applying the boots onto the doll and um, it'll also protect the entire boot from feeling tacky and leaving residue on any surface that you place it on. And now we're starting off on her iridescent disc earrings and I bought these iridescent discs off of an Etsy shop as well and I'm poking a hole with a thumbtack on the very top so I can attach the earring post to them. Um, I really like the color that these are in because they really do look like the discs I drew on the doll as you can see here. And here are the posts that I'm using. They're called ear wires. Um, and I'm basically just straightening out the post, cutting them down to size so that they fit inside of the Barbie doll's head. And then I'm inserting them into the hole that I placed in the iridescent disc. And here we are with a Kira doll I will be using for my custom. This is the BMR Made to Move doll that has a Kira face mold. And I'm going to be using nail polish remover to remove all of her face paint. And let me tell you guys that it was very, very difficult to do this. I don't know if it's because it's not pure acetone. But the more I rubbed, the more that the face paint went all over her face. And I did edit a lot of this out because it just was so much footage of me struggle busting through this <laughs> but here is the end result after i got everything finally taken out i'm definitely going to try pure acetone next time to see if that makes a difference um but yeah we got through that difficult part and now we're gonna be tackling her nail polish on her hands which was much more easy to remove And now let's give Kira that bald look she's always been craving. <laughs> and here we start removing all her hair with some scissors. And now that we've cut most of Kira's hair off, we go in with that flathead screwdriver and scrape it along the inside of her head to detach all of the plugs that are still on the inside. And look how easy this is. This is super easy and it's actually a lot of fun to do. Um, but yeah, this is how you remove all of that excess hair that's still left on her. And then after this, you can remove all of those hairs and plugs with some tweezers. And now let's start off on that wig cap. And to start off and protect the head, 
I am going to put some saran wrap around her head to prevent any of the glue getting onto her actual head. And I like to do this before I actually start painting the actual face because I do not want to damage any of the paint with this saran wrap. And then I take a piece of jersey fabric and wrap it really tightly around the top of the doll's head. And then I will be securing this with a rubber band. Um, you can use any type of old t-shirt fabric you may have. I prefer to use a white on her so that you won't be able to see the color peeking through. Um, I would probably avoid using darker colors if you're gonna be making the wig out of light colored hair. And now here I have already removed all of the excess uh, wrinkles on the cap. You do not want any of the wrinkles to be showing just so that all of your hair strands will lay flat against it. And I'm coating the entire thing in tacky glue and I will be repeating this step about three to four times just to really create a thick um, layer of tacky glue that will become hardened and it'll actually feel like a soft plastic at the end. And here I'm using some already, I guess you could call it separated yarn hair. I'm not sure what this is called, but I bought this on Amazon. And it's basically yarn that has not been twisted into strands yet. I thought this would help me avoid steps, um, which it kind of did. But you will see later on when I'm creating the strands that I lose a lot of the length of the actual cut strands that I um, measured here with Kira's hair. Um, so either way that you do it with either this type of yarn or the twisted yarn, you definitely are gonna use a, lose a lot of length. Um, I guess there's just a certain amount of length that you can get off of yarn. And it was just long enough to create the wig that I wanted, but if you wanted a really, really long wig, I feel like you are better off with rerouting the doll's head. Um, and here I'm using the hot glue to basically create the wefts of hair. and then I flattened the glue out with a credit card. This worked really well and it really created a flat, flat finish to the wefts. And now that I did that, I wanna cut out any excess of this glue to make the wefts as small as possible so that they fit easily on the doll's head. So here I've already cut the wefts into individual strands and I don't know if you can notice but the strands are much shorter than the original wefts that I had cut. Um, I've also dip dyed these in lavender which you really can't tell here but um, once I put all the hair together you start noticing how the lavender shows up a little bit more clear and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I just really wish that these wefts were a little bit longer. And now it's time to apply the wefts of hair using hot glue to the wig cap and I start from the nape of the neck in the back and work my way to the front of the head um, in order to have all of the different wefts be concealed by another one that's laid on top of that. So let's see how the wig turns out. So once the wig is fully assembled, I'm gonna be using this got to be glue spray and this metal straw to heat up as a curling iron to style her hair. But before we get to that, I'm feeling that the wig is a little bit poofy looking. So I grab some pomade and just work it through the entire wig to try to settle it down and not have it be so voluminous. And then after that, we're gonna give this wig a haircut. So now it's time to give a trim to this wig. And what I'm basically doing here is just making all the ends even. Um, since we were working with different wefts, they're all uneven and jagged. And I just wanna make everything 
pretty much uniform so that when we curl the hair, they all look the same length. So now it's time to curl the hair with a metal straw and the way I heat the metal straw is by putting the straw in between a flat iron and just holding it there for a few seconds. It actually heats up pretty quickly and then I just wrap the hair around the straw and hold it in place for a while and just wait for it to curl. Um, be careful because this gets really really hot and you can actually burn yourself. And here I'm actually using the flat iron to hold against the straw, which I do not recommend you doing this. It kind of gives the curl a very flattened look and I did not like how this turned out. So I actually stopped doing this and just use the actual straw itself. So after you curl all the strands, you can actually go back in also and either separate them and then also trim them a little bit more to make them a little bit more even. And here I'm using the heated straw to create more waves to the front of her hair. And now we get to that blank Kira face and I start mapping out all of her features with a light brown color pencil. This was so much fun to do. I was really referring to my drawing when I was doing this and trying as hard as possible to keep the drawing on her face looking exactly like my drawing. And it was a little bit hard of course because you're working on a 3D canvas here and her features are pretty much set on this mold, um, especially her eyes. So I tried my best to really mimic the eyes I had drawn on my fashion sketch. And here we pretty much have all of her eyes laid out and her eyebrows. And now we're starting on those luscious lips. And I really tried to copy the exact outline that I did on my fashion sketch on this Kira head mold. Now let's add that pinkish red hue to her lips like my drawing and this is a lot of fun. I have to say that I had a lot of fun doing this. 
It was a little bit cumbersome trying to draw the features while filming because the camera was so close to the head that I kind of found it difficult to do, but I tried my best. Um, I might, you know, give this another go at a later date uh, by removing all of this paint and then repainting her face again, just to see if my skills got a little bit better from this first time. So please go easy on me as well on the comment section. This is my first custom. And even though I had a lot of fun, I definitely know I can improve a little bit more. Oh my God, she's coming out so cute. Oh my God, don't you just love it? Look at those luscious lips, so good. And now here I'm trying to lay this brown into her eyes. Um, I found it to be very hard to use this dark brown color pencil for some reason. It just would not take onto this rubber head. Um, but anyways, at the end it did work out, you know, but it was just very hard to get the color to transfer onto the face. Now here I'm darkening in her eyelashes with a black color pencil and I'm loving the way they're looking. They're so cute. Um, the black was actually really easy to lay out on the head. Um, it just applied so much better than that dark brown so I was really happy with that. Now here I'm going in with a white color pencil again to really brighten out those white areas of her eye and make them pop a little bit more. Now let's take that black and add the pupils to her eyes and I'm trying to make these as large as possible so they give that cartoony feel of my sketch and I really like how her eyes started looking after this. So as I was doing this, I was remembering how fun the Barbie lines used to be in the early 2000s and 90s, how you always knew that the new lines were gonna include a cast of characters that you were very familiar with, whether it be Barbie, Midge, um, Kira, Skipper, or Ken, you always knew they were gonna be in the new lines and you could always count on getting them. So if you had a favorite character, you knew that you were gonna be able to get that character again. And you knew they had certain personalities and certain like characteristics. So that was what was fun about those era dolls. And I feel like now all of that's missing because now Barbie's just putting out random Barbies here and there. They don't have a name. They just have numbers associated with them. And I kind of miss that, you know, creative aspect of Barbies from the 2000s and the 90s. If you guys had a favorite character, please sound off below in the comments section. I would love to hear what character was the most popular one from those eras.
And here I'm applying the eyeshadow with a Q-tip and even though it was working out really, really well for her upper lid, once I got to that bottom lid, it was a disaster. The Q-tip was way too big and there was no way of shaving down the Q-tip. So I ended up having to cut a very small makeup brush um, to have a blunt edge so that it was very, very small and able to really get under her eye. And here's that famous makeup brush that I made. This worked out so much better. I was really able to concentrate on the areas I really wanted the makeup to be in. So if you notice here, I actually applied pink and purple to her eyeshadow, which is not how my sketch was. I don't understand where I got the pink from. I mean, it doesn't look bad, so I'm, I'm not mad about it. But for some reason, I didn't follow my sketch at this point and I don't understand why because I had the reference image right in front of me. <laughs> so that still is a mystery as to why I use pink. But like I said, I'm not mad about it. She actually looks really cute. And now I'm applying white to her cut crease to make it look like my sketch. My sketch has a white cut crease and it kind of opens her eye a little bit more and makes it a little bit more wide. So I really love how this turned out at the end. And here I noticed that I had not recorded the application of the white acrylic paint to her eyes. Um, so sorry about that. But now I am applying actual highlighter to her cheekbones. And this is actually NYX highlighter that I used to apply on her actual cheekbones. And it worked out really, really well. So I'm very happy about that. And then I also added another purplish lavender highlighter to her eyeshadow to really make it pop. And here you can really notice that highlighter on her eyeshadow. Now let's coat her eyes with a clear acrylic gloss and we pretty much are done with her face. I will also be applying this clear acrylic gloss to her lips to give her a shiny pout. OMG, she looks so cute. So now we're getting to apply those individual lashes to her eyes and this was extremely hard. They just wouldn't stay in place and 
once they were on, they were kind of like all over the place. Um, at the end, I was able to make them look decent. So I was not, you know, too mad about them. But I think that going forward, I'm gonna have to figure out how to really trim these down before I apply them. Or maybe just skip them all together. They were not my favorite part. Um, maybe it's the actual lashes I was using, I don't know. But either way, she did come out pretty cute. And of course, I will be trimming these down because at this length, they look pretty crazy. And now let's join the Mendoza Graham Candy Queen at the makeover station and see how she turns out. I think Candy Queen was so taken aback by those fashions that she forgot to hold on to that wrap. Be careful, girl, you're gonna get me demonetized. Now let's look at those fashions up close to see what Candy Queen was so excited about. Now let's throw on that top. Slip into those fishnets. And slap on that pleather skirt. Ooh, and what's that? A custom ombre wig? Yes, ma'am. Now let's throw that puppy on as well. And now to finish off the look with some perfect accessories, let's throw on a fluorescent yellow beret, a silver chain choker, another silver logo Barbie necklace, some iridescent disc earrings, and of course we cannot forget those beautiful Diamante Vivian Westwood booties. OMG, who is that girl? It has to be Mendoza Graham's Candy Queen. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, I had so much fun doing this video. I cannot believe that I actually achieved a custom doll. <laughs> um, I am so proud of her and so happy with, with the way she turned out because she is my first custom, so I'm kind of surprised with myself. Um, like I said before, I'm sure I will improve as time goes on, but I am so happy with the way she turned out. I cannot believe how cute her little diamante boots are and how I was able to achieve that iridescent top because that fabric was so hard to work with. But now let's enjoy some Candy Queen pictures. And like always, please remember to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos, and please share this video with all of your friends. It really does help me out a lot. In addition, please remember you can follow me on Instagram with the name mendozagram.art, where you can see all of my completed sketches, cool doll photography, and be able to participate in questionnaires for upcoming content on this very channel. And I will see all of you in my next video.